Oh, welcome everyone. My name is Frida Nixdorf and I represent the Work That Reconnects Network. Thank you for joining us for the Webinars and Conversation Cafe program, where we are providing a wide range of rich educational and supportive online events for our global Work That Reconnects community. Our intention is to strengthen the web of the community while reaching beyond its current edges to weave deeper connections with others who are contributing to the great learning in diverse and complementary ways. Today we are celebrating the release of Joe Delamore's new book, Raising Children in the Midst of Global Crisis, a compassionate guidebook for new paradigm parenting. In this time of pervasive social, economic, and environmental collapse, caring for our youngest generation and the ones yet to be can weigh heavy on our hearts. Drawing from the wisdom of the work that reconnects and over 20 years of experience supporting children and their families, Joe Delamore has developed a body of work that invites us to embrace caring for children as an exciting and powerful opportunity to contribute to the radical paradigm shift being called forth by these converging crises. Raising children in the midst of global crisis moves us through the work that reconnects spiral as we ground ourselves in the subversive nature of gratitude, develop our emotional fluency, nurture thriving life qualities in our households, tend to our intergenerational traumas and partner with our children in meaningful ways as we rise with them to meet this unique moment in history. Whether you're a parent, grandparent, teacher, work the Re reconnects facilitator, or practitioner that works with parents and children, or just someone who's joined us today to celebrate the launch of this book and learn about new paradigm parenting, we welcome you. So before I introduce Joe, I do wanna let you know that we will be offering a book giveaway for five lucky participants today. And um, we'll also be uh, get to experience a special live music offering with uh, singer, songwriter, and folk goddess, Diane Patterson. So much to look forward to today, but starting with Joe. Joe Delamore is a mother, coach, and work that reconnects facilitator who has dedicated over 20 years to the care of children and their families. She is the author of Raising Children in the Midst of Global Crisis, a Compassionate Guide for New Paradigm Parenting. She has been facilitating the work that reconnects since 2013 with a focus on dismantling oppression, transforming our cultural paradigm and supporting parents through these unprecedented and challenging times. Jo has led dozens of parents from around the world through her signature group program, Parenting in Tumultuous Times, a practical, engaging and supportive program for parents looking to do right by their kids in these times of converging global, global crises. She has also been one of the uh, core staff members of the Work That Reconnects Network and Weaver since 2019. And Joe is on a lifelong journey of remembrance and reconnection that is guided by being a mother, a caregiver, a grower of food, a spinner of wool, a maker of beauty, and a disciple of life. With that, I would love to hand it over to Joe. Oh, Frida, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here today, and I just feel so grateful for your support and for um, getting together with this amazing group of people. So as we come into our experience today, I want to just start with a little grounding. I want to start by asking us to arrive together fully, um, acknowledging this moment that we're in. So in all of the ways, right? Like yesterday, it was basically summer here in this little part of the world that I'm in. Today, it's snowing. Um, we've got, you know, this wild experience of being on the planet that is constantly changing and um, and also, of course, includes a lot of beauty and a lot of atrocity. So as we come into this space together, I just want to hold all of that. I want to bring our attention to that. And I just um, ask you to do whatever you need to do in your body right now to kind of arrive and get here and start connecting with your breath. We have a, our attention is being pulled in a lot of directions these days, especially if we're raising little ones, but really 
with so much happening in the world, all of the devastation that's happening, the, the pain and the trauma that's happening, and the intensity of the pressures on our time and attention. I want to give us a chance right now as we come in to just really be here with life, with ourselves, with each other, with this unique place on the earth that you are. Of course, we're calling in, we're connecting with each other by Zoom, but each and every one of us is somewhere in the body of earth. So as you connect with your breath, I invite you to just allow the ground beneath you to kind of hold you, to feel that unique ecosystem that you're in. To feel the miracle beneath your feet, the miracle that's flowing through your veins and filling your lungs, this shared miracle of the blessing of being human with earth. Tuning into that place on earth that you are and honoring both the beauty and the pain it carries and the humans that have cared for it and lived with it over time. So today, in this moment, I'm on the sacred land of Turtle Island in an area that was lived in and cared for over thousands of years by ancient mound building cultures who created these elaborate and massive earthworks that are still standing all among the hardwood forests here. This land is beautiful, rich soil, full of rivers and hills. It was later home to the Shawnee people for hundreds of years before the horrors of colonization devastated their communities and pushed most of the remaining people west in 1830 with the Indian Removal Act. This land is also cradled by a wide river that over 40,000 refugees from slavery fled through to cross into relative safety on the Underground Railroad. It's a land that is actually now poisoned deeply and overrun by industrial pollution, where these gorgeous rivers are lined with chemical factories and oil refineries. It's a land <laughs> that breaks my heart, honestly, every day and also teaches me resilience and endurance every day as I see and feel the regenerative power of the earth and our more than human kin continually renewing itself with beauty and grace. So as we gather here today to celebrate this book entering into this complicated world, I wanna begin by giving thanks and acknowledging that it has actually been called into being in service to the earth, in service to the great turning and collective liberation and to the possibility of a thriving future for generations to come. It's deeply rooted in the awareness of how hard it is to be a parent right now and how hard it is to be a kid right now in a time and society that seems so desperately futureless. My hope is that this book plant seeds for a viable future firmly into our collective consciousness. May it help parents and kids find meaningful connections to the living world and the thriving future that's calling us back to life. Let's just take a deep breath with that hope in our hearts. And to get us started today, I want to share a little story with you and some pictures to let you get to know me a little bit and to give you some context for this work before we get into conversation about it. My name is Joe Delamore. I'm a mom, a stepmom, an auntie by blood and community. I've been a caregiver, educator, and mentor for young people in a wide variety of situations over the past 25 years. I'm a transformational coach, a work that reconnects facilitator, and the author of Raising Children, 
in the Midst of Global Crisis, a compassionate guidebook for new paradigm parenting. For me, being a mother has been this interesting, intense calling into deep partnership with life, with the earth, and with my own child. It's been a radical experiment in unlearning and relearning and meeting the dynamic moment together at each step of the way. It started a few years before my baby was born, when they came to me in a dream and started conspiring with these particular sacred mountains to call me and their dad across the country to a precious little community of humans surrounded by the vastness of the more than human world. I had the enormous blessing of having a healthy pregnancy, a natural birth, and getting to take care of my baby in close relationship with the land. Yes, we actually lived in that little tent. We had a lot of fun together. We learned a lot together. And as an adult that was raised in conventional society, I unlearned a lot while I paid attention to my child's natural needs and tried to guide our lives in a way that met them. An amazing part of this experience is that we got to live among a lot of other parents and kids that were also on this learning and unlearning journey. Living in community gave me tons of opportunities to love and care for kids of all ages, to study the dynamics between adults and children, and to learn how to meet the unique needs of this growing generation. During these years, while my child was young, I was a transformational coach, mostly supporting parents. I also worked in local schools and served the community in all the ways I could. In those years, our family grew as I got remarried to this handsome guy here and became a stepmama. As our own kids entered into their teen years, one of the needs that arose was to have a real high school experience preferably in a school that had more than 12 students, which was literally the size of the high school in our little town. So in 2017, we took an enormous leap and we moved to the city. We landed in Portland, Oregon, just as Trump was getting elected to be the, or getting inaugurated to be the president of the United States. It was an incredibly surreal experience of colliding with all these aspects of society that I'd been intentionally distancing myself from for decades. To keep up with the urban cost of living, I started working full-time as a nanny. I drove through rush hour traffic every day, listening to Democracy Now!, feeling my pain for the world, and showing up on the doorsteps of families with little ones. The cognitive and emotional dissonance of trying to raise kids in this time of political volatility social unrest and environmental collapse was intensely palpable. This is the ground that began to sprout the seed of this book. As I held this full spectrum of parenting, from helping toddlers find their feet to preparing my own teens for adulthood in this urban situation, I saw clearly how it's all connected. I noticed the patterns of business as usual, trying to replicate themselves in our lives and all these opportunities to choose different paths. The parents that I worked with longed for sense-making. They longed for connection, hope, and empowerment as they faced these difficult times. I was carrying a wealth of knowledge and experience from my years of parenting in our little mountain community, and I knew it could help these parents. So it started to weave together with transformational coaching and the work that reconnects, and it began to spiral into this body of work that eventually came to be called New Paradigm Parenting. This work grows right out of the central mission of my long-term work as a coach, facilitator, parent, and general human, which is to support personal and cultural transformation as a catalyst for planetary healing. I like to frame it like this, to help me stay connected to the awareness that we're all in this together and how our personal and cultural realities are woven intricately into this big planetary interbeing of life. As the earth faces this crisis point, she needs us humans to heal and transmute the trauma that we've inflicted, endured, and passed down through the last several generations of human families so that we can meaningfully contribute to collective wellness. This is our work to do now, all of us. 
in ourselves, in our families, and in our communities in ways that are unique to our needs and to the positionality that we have within society. There are so many things in the world that we don't have control over. Each of us can only do what is ours to do. So if we're raising kids, then the way that we parent is one of those areas in which we can make conscious choice. I think it's one of the most powerful ways that we can dismantle the empires of oppression from the inside out. At this time in my life, now that my kids are grown, one of the ways that I get to support this work is by helping other parents raise children with an orientation to this healing process and with the skills necessary to do this big transformational work in their own households. This is the journey that raising children in the midst of global crisis takes us on. We start by taking an honest look at our world in crisis and seeing it as an opportunity for radical transformation. By naming it as a crisis and acknowledging that we can't continue on this path any further, we see that it's a pivotal moment of reckoning. It's a moment of choice or breaking point. To contribute to this transformation, we have to understand where we're coming from and what we're moving into. So that's what we explore next. As we reflect on the major issues that plague our world, we see them growing from a common root, a worldview that's based in separation and oppression. We call it the power over paradigm. This mindset drives the dominant society um, and is at the root of the wide scale environmental, societal, political and economic unraveling that we're experiencing today. It includes the impacts of extractive capitalism, white supremacy, patriarchy, fascism, and the many other forms of dominator mentality that have driven colonialism, industrial growth, and exploitation across the span of recent human history. The beautiful thing about understanding all of this through the lens of paradigm is that it allows us to see that it's not the only way to see the world. It's not the only way to be human with Earth. That in fact, there are countless human cultures that have been and continue to be guided by a much more powerful, longer lasting, more interesting and more beautiful paradigm. A paradigm that we can align ourselves with on a fundamental level as we live our lives and raise our kids. It's the paradigm of earth, the thriving life paradigm. It's not a new paradigm at all because it's always existed and it always will exist. The newness of it is in our choice to turn towards it in the way we raise our kids at this critical, emergent, never before happened moment. To dig into that work, we venture onto the spiral journey that many of you may be familiar with from the work that reconnects. We begin by grounding ourselves in gratitude, resourcing ourselves and connecting ourselves with the beauty and vitality of the living world and the joy of parenting to give us strength and bolster us for this big work. Then we move on to acknowledging and processing our emotions. There's a lot to feel right now for parents and for kids. And one of the consequences of the power over paradigm has been a loss of connection with our emotions. In this part of the book, I share essential skills for developing emotional fluency and creating an emotionally safe space for our children so they can grow into their own emotional fluency as well. Then we begin to envision the new and ancient ways of being that the thriving life paradigm calls us into by contemplating the actual qualities that life-sustaining societies require and learning how to nurture them in our households. The rest of the book is dedicated to growing forth with new paradigm parenting as we dig into the richness of everyday life. We explore what it means to be a parent in these times, how to actively dismantle the power over paradigm conditioning we received while we relearn the world alongside our kids, how to create mutually empowering partnerships with our kids, how to build community around our parenting experience and for our kids, and how to support them in becoming capable, resilient people. It includes tons of stories, specific guidance, and practices that you can do on your own, with your partner, and with your kids. As I've facilitated group work and individual sessions for parents rooted in this new paradigm parenting over the past several years, I've had the joy of seeing amazing transformations happen. A lot of the parents that I've worked with came into my programs feeling paralyzed by eco-anxiety, 
feeling fear for the future or guilt and helplessness. They were struggling to be truly present for their children and were often caught up in cycles of disempowerment and stress that kept them spinning out in old patterns. Practicing new paradigm parenting has helped their anxiety begin to release as they start feeling more empowerment, more joy, more courage and resilience. Actively keeping our attention tuned into this sacred work of parenting for change and knowing that we're not in it alone gives us the strength to carry on and truly serve life in the way we parent. As this book officially enters the world, I'm excited to share this resource with all of you. May it reach the parents who need it most and may it foster mutual thriving for all being. Thank you, Joe. Can we delve into some questions? Absolutely. Yeah, so your writing shares really rich perspectives of deep time and how we as humans, as parents or guardians have direct, can have direct impact on sort of the, the currents of the ancestral lineage through what's been passed to us, through coming to recognition of what we've taken on and through the work that we've done or are doing or will do to metabolize to metabolize and transmute so that we may maybe aren't <laughs> passing all, that on to our children. And as parents, we really have a responsibility to just shift that trajectory of whenever lineage of pain or trauma has been passed to us, to be aware, to bring our awareness to that and tend to it so it doesn't perpetuate future generations. And, and I really see that clearly in your book and in your work and I'm wondering if you can talk about that some. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I definitely want to start by saying that the healing work isn't about erasing what happened and it's not about getting perfect and none of us as parents is going to do it perfectly. It's, so there's not like an absolute thing that we're going to like check all the boxes and our kid is going to be like perfectly untraumatized, right? Like that doesn't happen. It's ongoing. It's lifelong. And what I think is really important in this time is to recognize the, like how this moment and our families and our lived experience right now fits into this larger picture and this big, long, deep time, big interbeingness so that we can understand that there has been and continues to be harm, um, separateness, oppression, um, discord and, and issues that are happening. And we can understand how they happen and why they happen so that we can do our part of the work of unraveling that and do our part of the work of like creating something different, coming back into alignment I, I find it kind of healing is kind of like smoothing the wrinkles in a way, <laughs> like finding them, understanding them so that we can smooth them and make that path um, more open for our kids. So just to make that less abstract, um, you know, we've got all sorts of patterns. We've got all sorts of assumptions, cultural assumptions and patterns and ways of being that we just, we picked up when we were kids and we picked them up from society. And we it's very easy to unconsciously replicate those in the way that we raise our kids. But if we can give ourselves, if we can zoom out a little bit and give ourselves some perspective, we can see, oh, if I want my kid to be emotionally grounded, if I want them to be like solidly on their feet in the world so that they can pay attention to respond to life and take care of others and take care of themselves, then I may need to change some of my behaviors. I may, may need to change the way that I react when this happens or that happens. And we can actually practice those skills in the little moments when they're young and as they're growing. And if we're practicing them transparently and working with our kids to learn like, how, how do we be human? in a good, respectful, loving, regenerative way, then they're gonna teach us, we're gonna teach them, we're gonna to learn together. So this is this is a big piece of that healing work. Um, and I again, I just think it's so important to remember, it's not gonna be perfect. 
and it's not going to be complete. It's going to be the part we can do in this generation. I, I am receiving that as permission, <laughs> <laughs> right? We're not, it's not about checking the boxes. It's really about listening and paying attention and being present to what is in, in any, in any given moment. Yeah. So, and this work, it's really, it feels like it's really about emotional fluency and resilience and sort of how we navigate our emotion, emotional state from moment to moment, not as a, as a to do thing, but just an awareness to that inner world and, and also how it relates with those around us and their inner worlds and their emotional states. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know you've worked a lot with a lot of parents and children and what are you noticing? You spoke to this some in your slideshow, but what are you noticing about what, what they're facing, how they're navigating um, their emotional relationships with their children and their children's emotion in the midst of the poly crisis that we're all in. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that we have um, this intense convergence of things where we're feeling so many emotions and we're given so little tools to actually deal with them. And we're just being bombarded with um with the intensity of the crisis and the urgency. And um, so a lot of the parents that come into my programs, like I said, have this really heavy negativity around parenting um, there. And it's, it's one of the things that really broke my heart when I started really listening um, to hear what was going on. Parents are afraid to have kids now. They think I shouldn't have kids. They feel guilty about that. Um, parents that already have children are thinking, are feeling guilty about the future that their children will have. I hear a lot of parents say to me, like, when my kid finds out how bad things really are, they're going to be so mad at me. Like, they're going to they're gonna say, why didn't you <laughs> fix it? Or why did you bring me into this situation? I, I see and hear parent, parents... Um, all the time, just like fretting over how awful the future is going to be for their kids. What's it going to be like in 20 years or 30 years or 40 years or 50 years? And um, simultaneously, there's also this really heavy pressure um, that often kind of comes from like environmentally conscious movements around like, it's our responsibility right now to fix this for the kids. And so we have this like this kind of obligatory heaviness of like it's it's just like all negative, <laughs> right? It's all like it's either I feel bad for it or I feel urgently like I have to fix it and I, I can't no, I don't know how to do that. So there's all this intense overwhelm happening. And in the midst of all of that, um no skills for actually processing. The intensity of these emotions because the power over paradigm and this kind of dominant society that we live in has done a very good job at severing us from our emotional response system for generations and generations and generations we've been trained not to actually feel and a lot of it is just happening up here we're not feeling it through our bodies we're not connecting we're not processing we're not emoting and so then that winds up just really getting put on our kids. It gets projected into our families as this like stress and intense reactivity um, and all of this pressure and all of this worry. So one of the things that I find really valuable in this work is that it carves out space for parents to come into process work together and be honest. This is what's keeping me up at night. This is what I'm worried about. This is what I'm feeling. This is what is like kind of gnawing at me. And then they get to express and emote it. And we learn skills. And this is a really big piece that I um, focus on is really learning skills on how to identify the emotion, name it, be honest and transparent about it, be responsible with the impact of our actions around it. 
Um, and while we're learning that, we're teaching our kids that, and we're creating a household where all the emotions are okay, all the emotions are welcomed, and it's an emotionally safe space for us to process and work together and recognize that it's, it is hard to be alive right now, and we're in it together, and we're going to help each other navigate that. And I, and this work, this is where, as the work that reconnects network, and we have a number of folks on the webinar today with us who are uh, facilitators or practitioners or both. And um, the, the practices of the work that reconnects, the spiral of the work that reconnects can really hold and support us in this work. And as facilitators and practitioners, we all sort of carry it, the work through us in a particular way. And your work in the world is to offer that work, hold parents within that work in, in the way that is really unique to you. And um, can you talk about how how the work that reconnects can really support parents with with meeting these building emotional resilience and fluency and and meeting these moments? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, like I said, it's that carving, carving the space out, right? So this is one of the things I love about work that reconnects in general. Joanna Macy talks about how this pain that we feel for the world is a colossal anguish and a, um, what does she say? Oh, I've got it right here. <laughs> she says um, that it is a great public secret. That's the phrase that I, I love to just keep in mind. She calls it out as this great public secret. Everybody's feeling this, but we're not talking about it or we're not talking about it in effective ways. You know, more now, we we talk about it more now than we did 20 years ago, but um, there's, a, there's not a lot of effective talk. There may be doom scrolling on your Instagram. There may be a lot of like stuff coming at you, but to create space, to be honest about how we're feeling and to be also like, able to critically analyze and assess and like really understand why are we feeling these things? How are all these things connected? So the work that reconnects in general allows people to do that. Um, and it puts a pause on life. You know, you may enter into a group practice where, okay, everything else is just going to wait for a second and I'm really going to focus on this and I'm going to really give it the time and attention that it needs. So for parents, that's even more necessary, right? For parents, we're pushing that all that stuff off even farther because we don't want to project it into our kids' lives. We, you know, we don't want to burden, you know, the playgroup or the birthday party with our worries. You know, <laughs> like there's just so much that we're pushing all that aside so that we can focus on, uh, you know, the daily demands and joys of parenting. So when we can carve out a little adult time to do the work with other parents, then we get to go through the whole process. And most of you on the call may know it's a spiral. We start in gratitude. We honor our pain and do that grieving work. We start to see things differently because of that processing. And then we figure out how we're going to move forward, how we're going to go forth. So when we've done that whole work, we come back to our family refreshed, you know, resourced, uh, reinvigorated and um hopefully with more um hope you know with more like okay i've got this i can do this i can meet this moment with my kids and converse or um as that goes whatever work we do we're modeling for our kids right so we're showing them that i can have big emotions i can be honest about them i can lean into them and learn from them and then I can figure out how I'm going to move forward from there. I, you know, when I participated in your series, we were still in the pandemic. And since then, I, my child has become a teenager. <laughs> and one of the things that you is really significant part of your book is this, uh, the, 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 the framing of power over and the transition to new paradigm parenting and that power, the sort of power with. 
and you know now my kid is a is a teenager and it feels like a whole new game things have really shifted and the power dynamics are shifting as he's really feeling into his independence and i know that's going to continue to shift in time and we see that as parents like that the arc of those movements and i'm wondering if you can say more about that how do we be in power with be in that sort of relationship with our child or our children yeah absolutely this is huge this i mean this is really where like that big picture of power over problems gets focused into the little moments that we actually can interact with that we can actually make some have some influence on um so in the whole philosophy of the work and and what i do we're talking about mutual thriving so we're talking about all of the needs that are present getting met and that means that we're working together it's not like my needs get met at your expense that never works out right that's a short-term solution for a few people um, so the real thriving that we're talking about is mutual thriving which means that we're all valuable everybody in the house everybody in the ecosystem, everybody in the society, right? Like we're, it's all valuable and we're going to meet all those needs together. And as we learn how to meet all those needs, everybody thrives and everything gets better. And so that you can see that on the macro, but in the micro, in the household, that is such a powerful and important thing to keep in focus. And um, one of the big paradigm shifts around that is that parents aren't more than kids we're not more human we're not more complete we're not more powerful we're there with our kids our kids came in with intention they came in with um personalities i'm sure anybody who's a parent on the call knows that they came in with will um so our kids have will they have strength they have power we have to learn how to meet that right? How to work with it. Um, when my child was young, they were very willful. They've always been very willful. And some people would comment to me like, oh God, you've got your hands full, right? And I was like, are you kidding me? This is life. This is preciousness. This is amazing. Like I want a willful child. I want a child who knows what they want and who can be clear about that. I don't want to squelch, uh, squelch that, right? So the challenge then for parenting becomes like, how do I listen to your needs? How do I pay attention to them? How do I meet them? How do I help you learn how to communicate them in a way that is like, you know, safe, effective, and in good relation with everybody around you? Um, and so I find it's super awesome if you can start that in babyhood and toddlerhood um, really meeting that because when they come into teenage years, whew, the game does change. <laughs> and if you've got those building blocks in there, then it's like, it can get a lot easier. Um, but at any point along the way, I think it's really, um, a really key thing is to, to pause and say, I see you. I hear you. I'm here with you. How are we going to meet this moment together? And there's parents who haven't laid those building blocks that have, you know, all sorts of challenges later in life with their kids. They can still do that at any moment in time. Parent or I'm sorry, kids want to know that their parents are there. They want to know that their parents are on their team and are willing to work with them. And so like that's a just a game changer. That's that big paradigm shift that you can say, I'm here. I hear you. I'm with you. How can we move forward together? Yeah, through through all that you've shared, I I, I keep feeling the sense of like, yeah, we're all in this together. It's all of us. It takes every one of us to be a part of this. And um, yeah, even even in the the experience of being in your parenting series, it's like each one of us that shows up for it we're a part of it. We're a part of this group We're we're all holding a piece of it. And it's like that in family and extended family as well. 
Um, yeah, I'm wondering if you can just speak a little bit to that experience of sort of that, that being, seeing from that way, that place of where we are all in this together. Yeah. And we need each other that way. Yeah, absolutely. So as we, as we get into that, I want to be really clear that we're not all in it in the same way. And so on a social level, on a societal level, sometimes people will say we're all in this together and it is meant to like erase the differences, the diversities, the different ways that the atrocities and the crises are impacting people. Um, that's not at all what I mean by this, right? We're all in it together. We're all in it in different ways. We're all having different impacts. And it's really important to be um, intelligent about that, you know, analyze that, understand that, be critical about that. What I mean that we're all in this together is kind of on a, on a wider, broader level, I feel the organism of Earth is, is an interbeing, you know, and Thich Nhat Hanh used that term. Um, I feel that this Earth is intelligent, is complicated, is um, constantly growing and changing, and we are of this earth. Like we're not separate. It's not like we're human beings, and Earth is our environment. Like that that idea is, I think, very problematic. Is very much power over paradigm thinking. Like we are literally expressions of Earth, and we're temporal. We're here for a short period of time. We raise children for a short period of time and then they're here for a short period of time. But all of that in deep time and in interbeing is that we are, we're of the earth and she's going through a major crisis point. And by crisis, I don't mean bad, awful end. I mean, choice point. It's like a time to really pay attention and make some changes. Um, so when we have a crisis in our own body, like we have a healing crisis, it's like, okay, I I need to do the work right now to shift something that's in going on in my body. I can't just ignore it. Um, so this is this moment right now for us to do that. Um, and and I, I just really trust the intelligence of the earth. And I trust the intelligence of our own part of being the earth that if we can open ourselves if we can listen if we can start paying attention if we can respond meaningfully and beautifully then um you know that's that's our role that's being part of this interbeing um i was just listening to a clip actually that you um captured from the guy in gathering that we did a couple months ago with lila june johnston sharing about you know, our work, like everybody has big work to do. Everybody who's here on the planet has big work to do. But our main work, our first work is to become a vessel for that work, is to open ourselves up so that that love can come through us. And I think she said something like, you know, that that big love, the angelic forces, the ancestral forces, they're trying to come in. They're trying really hard to come in and we have to like let them in. So that to me is that's the intelligence of the interbeing that's like and if and for us if we can shift our attention away from all of the power over paradigm stuff that's going on and we can reclaim our power and our attention and bring it back into tuning into the earth listening to what the earth needs and I, i'll just say one more thing i love that parenting gives us the opportunity to do that in such a specific way and like what I shared at the beginning of the slideshow, for me and my own parenting journey, it was like such a physical experience of noticing what a little human needs, a little vulnerable human. What does this little human need? And when I take care of other people's little ones, it's always that. It's like they teach you right there. If you're paying close attention to what that little body needs, then you get all the lessons you need. Lovely. 
Yes, I love that sense of the, what Lila June talks about of, of clearing so that we can be that sort of channel for all of that beauty and love and all those beings and that longing to really move through us and show up in the world. And when we bring that to relationships with our children and our intimate relationships, it's really powerful. Yeah, thank you. So I want to make sure that we have enough time for um, participants to be able to ask some questions as well. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we should um, pause here and um, call in Diane. Yeah, Diane Patterson is an award-winning songwriter, folk goddess, who subverts the dominant paradigm with rocking acoustic guitar and ukulele, a mighty pen and a woman's voice. Since 1989, Diane has been weaving her original mystic acoustic Americana music and unifying stories, planting seeds of love and revolution. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks so much, Joe. I think I was that teenager who looked at the world and said, oh, they're talking about overpopulation. Probably shouldn't have kids. And I was that young woman who saw a crazy world and said, oh boy, probably shouldn't have kids. And it wasn't until decades later, studying with our friend Martin Prechtel, and that's how we met, that I started to understand a very different way of looking at the world that made a lot of sense to have kids. There's so much more than the, the linear focus on the problem, right? <laughs> So, and, and I think this song is, is uh, reminding us of the magic and the nature and how we fit into things in a, in a very more powerful, beautiful, lasting way that of course we would, we would continue life in the best way we can. Donna. 
My goodness Diane thank you so much so much thank you for bringing that earth love that deep love into this space here mm -hmm. love you so much I appreciate you so much and I also want to love and appreciate so many other folks who have been supporting this work have been engaging in this work and um, helping get us to this point um, of being able to actually have a book that we can work with. So um, I just wanna take a moment to um, thank all of the parents who have participated in the programs that I've offered over the last several years because working directly with you and workshopping these practices and these concepts and getting your feedback and being with you um has been has been what's made it possible to get us to this point and i i feel you all this morning in my meditation i got to have this beautiful circle of all of you and you're all over the world and i get to hold your hands <laughs> which we don't get to do right because we're usually on zoom but i could like really feel like i was holding your hands and we were in a big circle and so I just want to share that out. And I see some of you are on the call today. And so just like feel that love and appreciation from me and feel that connection with all of the other parents who have um, been through this work and who are going to go through this work in the coming years. And um, I want to also appreciate a team of folks who decided to be on my book launch team. Some of those are parents that went through the program. Some of them are my colleagues at the Work That Reconnects Network um, or friends and community members. So um, thank you to those of you, you know who you are, who have helped kind of keep this going and get to this point. Um, and I want to thank Simon. I want to just thank you so much. Simon was a parent who went through the program. She's a Work That Reconnects facilitator and she edited the book meticulously, exquisitely, and with such <laughs> such care to not only the the you know grammar and flow of it, but also to the content and such good feedback. And so thank you for going on this journey with me, Simone. It was really, really priceless to have your partnership in this. Great. And um and along those lines also um, I want to thank Eileen, who is doing our tech support today. So you can spotlight yourself for a second. Let me give you a little hug. Eileen did the um, proofreading for the book and made it possible for it to, to get to you in a nice, tidy way. So thank you, Eileen. Um, and my beloveds, my own child who taught me how to be a parent my dear sister who showed me um, through a beautiful example how to parent as she raised her child and my loving husband. Um, so 
Mountain and Allison and Blue. I see you there too. Let's get you in here. Yay. This is my sweet beloveds, my close circle. And man, they've put up with a lot as I've um, put this book together and have all contributed to it in such beautiful ways. Um, Blue, thank you so much for hashing out lots of the content with me that involved our stories um, and gender identity. We had a lot of good conversation about all of that. Allison, thank you so much for your, especially your really early feedback that put the, the book in this direction and your really solid support in the book launch experience right now. And Mountain, thank you for the many, 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 many hours of um, love and support and time and backup that you've provided to make it possible to get to this point. I love you guys. Great. Okay, so Frida, let's give away some books. All right. I've got five right here that are ready to go. And they're going to go out <laughs> to five individuals around the world, wherever the wheel lands. All right, here we go. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> Anna, uh, Anna, this one's for you. <laughs> see, let's see who's it gonna be ah maha gabriella this one's for you whether you're here or not i've got your address and i'm gonna mail these out Ah, Marika! This one's for you right here. <laughs> Margaret C. We got it. We got last one. Who's it gonna be? Look at the S. Hey, beautiful. We didn't put your full last names because it wouldn't have fit on the wheel. But I've got you all on the list. I've got your addresses, and I'll be sending those books out as soon as I can. Um, that's fun. That's so good. And if you didn't win a free book and you want a book and you didn't already get one, then you can go ahead and buy one the books are available there and you can get them you can order them directly through me or through the various different book um options that are there so great fun yeah wonderful so um do you want to take some questions from participants yeah yeah thank you hi joe congratulations it's been such a journey and to see it come to completion is so inspiring to me. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Um, well, I think what I would, I, ha I have a, a question. And also I would love to, yeah, just say a few words uh, on how, um, how supported I have felt uh, by you, um, especially through the times when I was more available before my life started changing radically in the past year or so. Uh, but prior to that, I I felt um, you as an ally uh, and someone who helped me um, see things that I was already feeling like I knew and that I, um, I felt frustrated not being able to use these things that I knew as a mom like I could help others do it but as a mom I felt like I was failing my daughter was turning uh 
into a teenager and boy oh boy she's so strong because she's raised in those values that you described at the beginning with your pictures about how you raised your own child she's strong and um i felt that despair of like uh being stuck in the par in the par power over paradigm over and over and you would always be like bring me back into my toes and um, not only with the things you would say to me but by your consistency and and dedication to having a group of parents meeting I feel that that was very nourishing uh, because yeah I can feel very lonely to be uh, a differently thinking parent in this world where everybody's just complying in a sense or not just but having to comply so many times to just put up with the pressures of the system and all of that so thank you for your tenacity and for uh exemplifying and uh just helping us move through all of this uh which and and also doing it without a mindset of fixing things but of just helping the energy keep moving through what unknowns we you know keep uh coming at us or moving through us. So thank you so much. And I feel that my question is that question of, um, I, I, I don't know if, if you tap into this in your book um, yet, but you know, is this, this sensation that parents of teenagers might experience as we, we raise them in these values. And like you said, we plant all these seeds and then I've started noticing early on how, you know, the, the teenage natural sapient way of being of like pushing back, you know, just watching my daughter pushing back in a way and complete and at times absolutely rejecting those core values of go, come back to earth and uh, power with and all of that she's rejecting and rejecting and it's so hard to trust that that pushback is not uh, sometimes acting uh, on against them, right? Against the kids because they start rejecting good food. They start rejecting, you know, self-regulating tools. They start rejecting even the core values of, of staying with life and, and taking care of life because that's what, you know, adolescents need to do. So I, I don't know if it's a question or a reflection on like, it's so hard to watch that. And right now what I'm, I, I've always experienced this last few years, experienced this like, well, this is my time to set my foot down. I'm going to tell you, you have to go to those music classes because, because <laughs> spirituality is important and blah, blah, blah. But I haven't done it. I've left her, I've left her decide. And now we only got one more and one and a half years long more of her being under our our care. I mean, we're always under your care, but as an underage person, and now I'm worried. Now I'm actually concerned. You know, now I'm actually seeing like there is some rupture that I'm wondering how it's affecting even her health and I feel like at, at this point, this is probably the time when I'm, I'm going to have to be tell her, honey, I'm, 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 I'm worried. And this is why. Um, and, but it still feels so risky, you know, that even at this point when she's imagining she's going to be an adult or, I mean, imagining herself as an adult and thinking she kind of already is there. And I'm like, well, you're so far away from your, uh, uh, for my eyes to see you're so far away from the connection to your spirit because that's what you're being taught in school in a sense in, unconsciously yeah so I guess that's the paradox you know what I mean and I don't know if it's a question but I feel that this is a space to bring these kinds of ideas you know and not try to fix but yeah well I, I mean I think you're describing something that we mostly all can relate to anybody who's parenting and especially if you've gone into or through the parent or the, through the teenage years i think this is not unique to your household right this is something that is pretty common um and is like more and more and more intense as the like general society social media school all these things are um possibly drawing kids into more and more destructive um or like 
self-loathing or you know disconnected mentalities right there's a lot to be concerned about there it's it's really tough um and yet there's also this like really natural thing that you talked about of individuation so as humans be at this you know the sapient thing <laughs> as human beings grow they're going to individuate um and like i was mentioning before we each have a connection to life life is intelligent we have a purpose we have a path it's long it's longer than childhood it's longer than the one lifetime even probably it's it's more than you can imagine it's more than you can analyze and think about in your brain and control so the most important thing that i think for parents to do is to cultivate connection and to trust so you might think that you have all the ideas of what this child should do. And you might be worried about like, well, we were on a path of good nutrition and now you're off the path and oh no, what's going to happen? <laughs> like, but like the, the bigger thing there is the relationship is like feed the relationship, feed the connection, feed the trust and know that, you know, people can handle years of bad eating people can handle years of this and that they can handle all sorts of but what they can't handle is not feeling a sense of belonging particularly with their parents like that is something that's crushing so if we can trust and let go and especially in those teenage years just like okay yeah you're gonna be weird you're gonna do shit like you're gonna do things that i don't understand that i don't like and whatever but I'm here for you and I'm listening. I'm paying attention to what your real needs are. I'm not projecting my ideas onto you. I'm just listening and I'm showing up, consistently showing up and meeting you, right? Then that's going to be the lifetime relationship because you have a year and a half left before, you know, adulthood, but yeah. you have a whole lifetime, hopefully that you're going to be in relationship and that's going to be your child's choice. Do they want to be in relationship with you, right? And that's going to be totally based on trust and connection. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that reminder. Mm -hmm. It's really good to see you again. You do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really feel that too. Um, if anyone else has questions, please Brent, put your hand up so we can see you. But yeah, as a you know, the parent of a teenager. And remembering my own teenage years and my rebellion against my vegetarian parents. And it was like, how many cheeseburgers and French fries and <laughs> milkshakes did I have to drink before I found my way back there? And it took some time. And I think like, I feel teenagers these days and all, so there's so much that they're grappling with. And like, I see this like intense fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And like, as a parent, if I can like highlight how I see my son thriving, like, Mm -hmm. I where I see that thriving where I see that connection to life and focus there and connect with him there and and just trust that he's on his path that's it's really hard but yeah that's where I'm with it I hear you Penelope too thank you Anna Carla and Jaime hi <laughs> so good to see you too <laughs> what thrill what thrill <laughs> um uh i mean immense gratitude i mean we've been uh we, we participated in uh, parenting in tumultuous times back then and um we've been uh just um uh, mm, i guess uh composting and fertilizing and and, and and making making ground and uh um and sowing the seeds that uh that were planted there uh, uh with you and amongst the the group and all and uh ooh, it's been a, a beautiful thing to um to have that with us uh, in these times and um and to uh to like to feel the connection um uh, with uh everything that's going on uh there with the, the work that reconnects and and with um just being alive and 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 being with our with our kids with with Lua our daughter and um the bigger community of, of children we've been moving around uh we're back home and uh we're putting um all of this forth um 
to a new group of parents we've, we've been living uh, and starting to to work with around here in, in, in the new school that we're at in this uh, it's uh we're sort of kicking it off uh and and it's been beautiful i mean just uh a few a few seeds uh, thrown here and there uh with a fertile soil that's uh you know being cultivated and and it's beautiful to see you know just this immediate openness and um uh like breath of fresh air uh of of um of all this work uh your work and everything that's put been put there uh before for you and uh, and and your sharing of this <clears throat> and um we feel like super fortunate that uh, uh, that the book is out, and that we have these, you know, this this beautiful um, uh, gift uh, to to share and to to have, uh, you know, with us to um, just to you know share the love that's there and share the the beautiful tools that um, that we've been, you know, seeing as we share it along our way uh as such as i mean such a you know just a spring just a spring of, of fresh water uh, that wherever it you know we share it it's it's just like uh feeling these connections open up with with other parents um feeling how that's uh nurturing our daughter and and children in, in the communities that we were uh, uh you know living in uh and um i just wanted to say that maybe um uh, instead of Joe del Amor, maybe it would be like Joy del Amor, because you know you give us so much, you know these all these uh, uh, beauties that that are put forth within the scope of you know what what's going on in the world. Um, we see it like bring a lot of joy uh, to us and to others. So uh, we're uh, we're so thankful and um, and uh, you know keeping there and opening groups out here in in, in Mexico and. Um, and we're also like uh, you know connecting with you and 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 being ready to uh, to move the book towards uh, Spanish, so we can have <laughs> tools uh, ready over here to 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 be more available to share. And uh, uh, it's uh, it's really like a like port like a portal like a portal where where you know we feel safe and uh, we feel connected. And we feel that we're um, we're just you know um, expanding our lives as as adults, connecting with kids, uh, and and just you know widening the portal, and 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 just inviting more and more. And 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 there is for us also like this uh, huge uh, gift of connecting with others when we when we open this this up in the portal and the sharing. And it's uh, it's uh, I mean it's super hopeful if if that exists uh in that way of, of of hope but just just being there and 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 opening up to 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 what all of this gives um to the to the earth and to us and and to kid into our kids and, and and the community uh so just like a uh great thankfulness um of of you and your work and your family supporting and, and everyone here and the groups and all it's very uplifting and and uh, we're very thankful and joyous <laughs> that, that's that's here already <laughs> beautiful oh thank you so much great to see both of you mm. thank you this is from simone I have a very sore throat, so I won't speak, but did want to say as the person who had the tremendous privilege to edit this book, how thoughtfully Joe wrote it. At times, Joe and I would go back and forth over one word. Each word was chosen with great care and intention and also how practical the book is. Offering really concrete tools and activities to try out in family, many of which are also fun that can help us shift how we live together. The book is hopeful and joyful and the tools work. I hope everyone buys lots of copies and shares them widely with <laughs> strangers. <laughs> yes. Hey, um, fun. Hi, Chris. Yeah. I'm sitting in Australia, in the eastern part of Australia, and the light is just beginning. Wow. And uh, and it's a bit. There's a whip bird in the background, um, sort of welcoming the day. Mm -hmm. And um, I really enjoyed 
um, Joanna's stuff and time when she came out here a few times and over the years and I brought my kids up as much as we could and I really identify with what a lot of you are saying. And now as a grandparent, I go back and visit them and the kids and I love that. But one of the things I'm struggling with, and I don't know if your book touches on this, is um, they've got the values and they're just delightful kids and the grandkids are the same. But um, you talked about being a cultural transformation coach or uh, my sense is uh, our kids have got so caught up in surviving in the world that they really don't have the time to put into to even learn to, to update themselves about what needs to happen at a really deeper level. And and I watch them all um, slowly get caught up in, you know, the busyness of really good jobs or the run the runaround of parenting and whatever. And and um, I think we're all missing it. That the sort of change, the transformational change, the paradigm shift that's needed is they've been caught up in the current paradigms and we're you know, being these wonderful, helping, you know, Christian, loving, whatever selves, and to 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 deal with the current mess of the current paradigm, and we're picking up the pieces. We're loving people and whatever, and and one of the things I find really hard is they create connection, and we put a lot of energy, my wife and I, into maintaining that connection, but um, the kids don't have the energy for it. Like when I when I get those rare moments when I'm not with the grandkids and with them, they actually know where I'm coming from and and or we are coming from, and they also know that they're too busy with things, and, and it creates a that I don't want to talk about it now, Dad, sort of thing. So it's not just with when they're teenagers; it goes on. And I'm wondering if we've just we we've lost the, lost them culturally to the bigger forces. Um, I don't know, a bit of a bubble on there, but uh, any responses or from anyone yeah it's great what you're doing i love the book and i want to read it um yeah yeah thank you and thank you for sharing this i mean this is this is a big feeling this is a big heartache of and and like you said have we lost them to dominant society basically to business as usual have we lost them and I think this is it speaks to what Penelope was um, saying too. It's like there are forces that are pulling on all of us, and pulling on our children as young ones, as teenagers, as adults, and they're pulling on us. And um, it's it's a lot. Like the main the mainstream has a very strong current, right? It's constantly pulling us, and it has a lot of tools to get our attention. Um, and so this is really um, both a, a heartache and something to be aware of and practice with all the time. So again, I I don't think that we have like perfect fixes, right? Or like there's not like a solution, but I think that there's an awareness that we can have around, okay, the mainstream is has such a strong current, it's pulling our attention. Our attention is where our power sits right and so just reclaiming that attention as often and as much as we can and um and you said like your your kids and your grandkids are caught up in doing keeping things going in the mainstream and the in their jobs and all of that like reclaiming and you can only do this for yourself really but through yourself you can model reclaiming your attention and bringing it back into cultivating connection with earth and so like i really find that getting out of the head and into the actions can be a very powerful way of of changing you know our relationship with paradigm and um diane mentioned that um, she and i both studied with martin prechtel and this is one of the things that i think was most meaningful in what I learned during my time studying with him is that it's like every moment is a choice to be with earth. Every moment is a choice to create beauty and to respond meaningfully with earth. And she's always, she's constantly renewing. And so she's always asking, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? And it may seem small in a moment, right? 
but all those small moments of turning our attention away from the media circus or whatever and to really building relationships with our little ones or really taking care of the earth or really relearning a skill that's been lost like those those add up and those recreate our cultural reality so i it's it's not a simple thing and it's not like oh do this and everything will be fine i i'm with you in the heartache i'm with you in that struggle um and it's like a lifetimes long process of constantly turning ourselves back to earth and responding to her i'm sending you lots of love for your relationships with your grandkids and just let them surprise you you know they're they've got an intelligence yeah yep thank you I, i'm so glad that i came on to be with this is the first um time I've been connected to the work that reconnects and and it's this is a, a great introduction to having said that I met Joanna Macy about 40 or 50 years ago and I had no idea what she has been up to over the years <laughs> and now I know what she's been up to it's amazing it's just amazing I, I also uh, I've worked with uh, children for probably 40, 50 years from preschool through kindergarten and uh, done parenting workshops and have there. So I've just wanted to be here and be with another parenting person and see mm -hmm. what's new, you know, or what what don't I know or what haven't I heard? And it's been very, 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 very good and very interesting. And, and uh, I just so relate to what everybody has said and what this work is about and because I um, I now I now live in San Francisco I raised my family and spent most of my life on the East Coast in Maryland outside of Washington DC and, uh, and and moving here to be with our first grandchild uh, and I mean I now have three grandchildren with two daughters and um, it's it's we so we get to see what do I want to say it's just um, <clears throat> I've, I've lost a, a, my personal connection to life and people outside of my family that I did parenting workshops with, who were the parents of the children that I saw every day for 40 years, you know, and it's sort of like looking for an, a new connection. And, I, and I, I, I think that this work that reconnects is a good start. So uh, thank you very much for, off, for being there and for having this talk and I may see you around. It'd be nice to sit and chat with you some. Yeah. So Wonderful. I can totally relate. My life right now is separate from community. I've, I've traveled across the country to take care of my husband's um, elderly folks. And mm -hmm. so for the first time in my life, I don't have children all around me all the time. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I can, I can really feel that. Um, yes. so I just encourage you to find the, the community that is there. And you said you're in the Bay area. Yes. Yeah. Lots yeah, of San work that reconnects folks in person doing stuff in the Bay area and follow the link in the chat to find out, um, more about the work that reconnects and the things that are happening online. Um, lots and lots of stuff happening online to connect with. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yep. I would love to talk a little bit more about some of the concepts that I shared or some of the challenges that some parents or grandparents are experiencing, um, questions and curiosities around how, um, how to be with parenting in this time. Hi, Allison. Hey, so moved, so beautiful today. Um, and while it's been such a um, ongoing process, I also feel like it's just beginning, uh, which I'm so excited about. Um, and one of the thoughts, particularly hearing Marty um, speak um, and that phenomena, um, I, what I love about your book and also the work you do is um, bringing in the intergeneration and you, you are always sharing Yes, the parents of all uh, the families look different, 
they can uh, many different ways but also no matter who you are there's a relationship that we can have with the intergen um so i i love if you could share more about that and and how this book can apply to that yeah absolutely um actually i originally was writing for parents teachers caregivers every everybody who touches in the lives with children um and i kind of narrowed down and honed in to, so that the voice is really towards parents in this book but the teachings and the and the work really can be applied to everybody um who cares about life everybody who's interacting or could interact with kids and um at the time that i was writing the book the first draft of the book i was um nannying and um working with other people's children a lot and i was just noticing and feeling like the the care teams that are organized around any child right like every child has parents but they have like a care team and there and that it might be like really disconnected and not very well nourished right in modern reality but it could be really well nourished it could be really connected and so this is something that i encourage in the um in the book and in my programs um is building community around our children and um so even if you don't have little ones in your care right now as your your own children or if you're a grandparent or if you're an auntie or an uncle or some some other kind of relationship or just a, a teacher or anybody who can engage with kids and like marty um you were talking about your desire to engage in community finding a way to connect in with that with the care team of the younger generation and building those relationships and being intentional about them can be a radical paradigm shift it can really radically culturally uh like it could be part of radical cultural transformation because culture is built on relationships and that is one of the things that has been really disjointed over the course of these generations of power over paradigm so we can be consciously reweaving that by making good relationships with the other parents the other teachers and and really noticing the kids need this right the kids need us to figure out how to be in collaboration and cooperation around their care in case anyone has been noticing, I am sitting here spinning, and I know you're a spinner too, Joe. So it it actually helps me to pay more attention to be doing something with my hands. It's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my spinning wheel that um, I've been working on. Yeah. Anyway, um, I just feel like I did, you know, we didn't have your book. Well, you, you are probably younger than my children, so you <laughs> couldn't possibly have written it yet. But somehow, we did something right, and it just, it makes me feel really good to know that, intuitively or, and probably partly because of. We grew up and we were doing encounter groups and we were doing gestalt therapy and we, you know, we were into the human potential movement and as it was called at the time. And I don't know that we realized it was having an effect on our parenting, but it certainly did because what you're talking about, the emotional fluency, I almost think that that may be the most important ingredient because we did let our kids have their feelings and we got a lot of flack you know your kids are wild they're you know not <laughs> disciplined they're not you know but uh they're amazing human beings and uh only one of them is a father and he's raising amazing human beings he and his wife are raising a human amazing human beings one of it just turned 21 a couple days ago. And, um, but that thing about letting kids have their feelings and 
expressing your feelings honestly, not dumping them on the kids, but letting the kids know, you know, what they are, what the feelings are. And uh, I remember one time we, my husband and I got into a quarrel as we were driving somewhere in the car. And the, the kids were quite small at that time, two boys. And they were like, oh, oh, this is terrible. And we realized we needed to fight in front of the kids. <laughs> so they would know it was okay and that it wasn't the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by keeping that kind of thing away from the kids, we were actually doing them a disservice. Not that we fought all that much, but, you know, people quarrel, people argue, people get upset with one another. And uh, they needed to see that that was just okay. It wasn't the end of the relationship. So anyway, I just wanted to share my delight in feeling like somehow our parenting was in aligned with what you describe in your book even yeah. 50 years ago oh absolutely and <laughs> because like i didn't invent anything right i didn't invent the concepts in this book these concepts these practices they they are intuitive right mm -hmm. and they and they um a lot of what's in the book is also um referencing a lot of other kind of conscious parenting, gentle parenting, restorative practices, all sorts of different tools that you could dive farther into if you wanted to get really into like those specifics. Um, so so it's it's beautiful to hear that. And I also like I learned what I'm sharing in the book through experience. And like I said, through my child teaching me what they needed. Right. And also through witnessing other parents and there's tons of other parents that I know in my life who are practicing parenting in this way and have been inspirations to me and have been fed into, you know, some of the concepts that I share in the book. So it's not like um, you need the book to give you an idea that I invented that doesn't exist. It's more of like the book is tying things together and articulating things that might help you feel more grounded in your parenting and also specifically more connected with like what does it matter what I do in my little household and in my little moments with my kids in terms of this big global crisis that we're mm -hmm. experiencing mm -hmm. like how do how do my choices connect with dismantling systems of oppression for example mm -hmm. like that that's mm -hmm. the big thing I think that the book carries and helps bring together bring into focus right and so I mean to me, that was, it wasn't exactly a new concept, but it was articulated in such a way that it was, oh, yeah, parroting is a part of the great turning. It's not just something we do on the side while right. we're working out there for the great turning. It's right. part and parcel. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think that if nothing else, that, that concept uh, is going to do a lot of good for people who really care and are really out there, you know, on the front lines, realizing, hey, pay attention to the children too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of connects also to what Bio Kamalafe speaks about around mm -hmm. activism, because our impulse often in the power over paradigm and in just like the conditioning that we have is to react to the problem in a way that may actually be perpetuating the problem more. And so mm -hmm. when we like attack activism, <laughs> you know, and do it at the expense of our families and at the expense of actually like deeply sitting with and transforming our own inner mm -hmm. consciousness, then, um, you know, we can be sometimes doing more harm than good and so this is one of those ways where it's like it brings us back into like okay let's really be with and and tend to the roots and you know that doesn't mean don't also and, go on the street and do what you need to do there but don't leave we the can home. get into operating from here like you were saying our ideas about what needs to happen rather than letting ourselves be guided by gaia 
yep. which means being quiet and listening and tuning in and going for walks out in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you. Smiley. Great to see you. I'm playing in the dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, yes. They kind of tie together. Um, Aaron asks, first, thankful with you for your bright work. Can you speak to struggles on finances and the construct of money and that in relation to being available to our children instead of in constant service to earning money to provide those things like shelter, gas, money, food, how do we move away from the machine? And then Simone asks also if you could speak a little bit more to parent exhaustion. Yeah, absolutely. I'm um, similar to, you know, what Chris shared before. This is, this is a big heartbreak. This is part of being in this moment and the force um, and intensity of the current of the mainstream. Um, it's not only pulling our attention away, you know, in in abstract ways, but it's also really demanding so much of us. And um, again, there's no simple solutions. It's not like, oh, we'll just do this and then you'll have plenty of money and you don't have to worry about it. But it's like money is a thing that we are contending with on a daily basis, meeting our basic needs is a thing that we're having to contend with on a daily basis. And um, and to Simone's point here, it can be quite exhausting. Even if you have lots of money, right? Having little ones can be really exhausting. Um, so I think it's, it's a matter, again, as we're talking about this whole thing of assessing, looking at and sensing into what are we feeding in our lives? What are we choosing in our lives? What, what patterns are we plugging into? And you may be able to have some choice around that. You may not, right? Some of us don't have the privilege of having some choice around some of these things, but in the places where you do have choice, choosing that connection with earth, choosing to cultivate relationships that are mutually beneficial and supportive, choosing to slow down, choosing to kind of clear away the clutter or the things that are causing the stress. Um, and again, I just want to acknowledge, you might not have control over that. Like there's there's health concerns, there's catastrophes, there's all sorts of things. But in the times and spaces and places where you can make choices to kind of dial it down and get more simple or more sane or more regenerative in your life, um, do that when you can, because that's going to create more energy for the moments that are more difficult. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I, I, in the sense of really looking at mutual thriving, considering all the needs and trying to meet them in a healthy and good way to the best of your ability. And, you know, giving, cutting yourself slack for the places and times where you're stressed and you're struggling and you can't. I wonder, Joe, if maybe we should, I see that we're starting to approach time and offer some opportunities um, for folks to connect with you and maybe join an upcoming program, receive some support. Great. So yeah, I as we've talked about, I've gotten a chance to um, develop a body of work that is based around the work that reconnects, but it has completely all new practices. They're all original practices that are designed specifically for parents in the style of the work that reconnects. So it's pretty fun because you get to go around the spiral and you get to connect with other parents and you get to have um, prompts and practices that are specifically designed to the specific challenges um, and situations that we're facing as parents. Um, and I love facilitating this work. I've gotten to do it in person and I've gotten to do it a lot online through the pandemic time. Um, and over this last year, I have, I'm so sad to say that I have not been able to facilitate for this whole last year because I was desperately trying to get this book published. So I'm really excited to, um, now have some upcoming programs on the calendar. Um, I put together a, um, a short standalone piece that's going to be on March 1st. And so that's open to everybody to come in just to like kind of intro, um, 
experience the way that I facilitate, move around the spiral. Um, it's for parents who are, you know, possibly curious about this work or just want to kind of get into it. And then following that, starting on March 29th, um, I'm going to start my program again. So this is really fun because this is this is where it will be a smaller group that is more intimate, more connected. We really build the container. We really create relationships with each other and we go much deeper. Um, this program is going to have five sessions. They'll be every other week and we'll be working with some of the content in the book. So each pro each session is going to be connected with a section of the book. There's practices for you to do at home with your kids. There's practices that we'll do in the session together as adults. Um, it's really rich. It's really deep. This is, you know, the what some of the folks were referencing um, when they were sharing. And I'm really excited to get to do it again. Um, and so those links are in the chat. Um, please go ahead and sign up. Hopefully um, we'll have some flow there. So if you want to do the five week program, um, sign up soon because that is a small group. It'll get capped. So um, if you want to be part of that, go ahead and jump right on it. Um, and then I'm also going to be doing some in-person stuff coming up in the next year, which I'm super excited about post pandemic ish, um, getting to be with people in real life again. Um, I'll be going out to Oregon at the end of May to do um, a family weekend nature immersion with parents and kids, which is really exciting. Um, I don't have any information about that yet um, to, to check in to, but if you wanna get on my list and find out about upcoming events, um, please do. And Frida, do we wanna share a little bit too about just the work that reconnects network? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I really, I mean, this is this has been really powerful, Joe. Thank you. And I know that there are so many facilitators out there um, offering their work to the world in unique ways. In um, coming up in May, we're going to be um, offering another webinar series uh, similar to this for one of our facilitator members, uh, Jess Durante, who's going to be releasing a, a "We Are the Great Turning" podcast, which is a series of conversations between. Um, Jess and Joanna Macy. And so this as a facilitator member through the Work That Reconnects Network, this is available to you if you have work that reconnects related things that you're launching and you want to share uh, share and um, yeah, be celebrated. And it's not just if you have like a podcast or a book, but also if you're facilitating the work in some sort of way and you want to facilitate that for the global community. Um, if you have any kind of um, specific work that reconnects content that you want to share. And so I want to mention also in April, we're going to be having a grief ritual facilitated by Hector Aristizabal, who is an incredible work that reconnects facilitator. Um, and we're working on the registration <laughs> information for that now. So just stay tuned to uh, notice notices through the work that reconnects network. But that that is going to be a very deep and rich grief ritual in April. And I just want to give a big, huge thank you to all of you for being with me and for being interested in this work. And may you and your children and your lineages be blessed and connected with the earth. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you all. Lots of love. Great to see you all. Bye, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much for joining us today. To learn more about the Work That Reconnects webinars and Conversation Cafe program, please visit our website at www.workthatreconnects.org. We welcome you to become a community member of the Work That Reconnects network. Visit workthatreconnects.org, become a member for more information.